Hey folks, Jen or Markerfin here. And today we're going to take a look at the DID Genesis Rebuildable Atomizer from Greece. From e-vape.gr to be precise. Let's uh, go take the usual deep dive. So let's take a dive into our DID Genesis Atomizer. These are all little bits and bobs it comes with. And one extra piece I got. It comes with four pieces of stainless steel mesh two 325 and two 400. Um, I've already gone ahead and seasoned a coil, wick, I mean, for us to use. Um, it comes with a 510 mouthpiece, an Allen wrench for tightening the screws, and the O-rings that you need to install for it to function properly, as well as one or two spares of each size. So let's take out two of the big O-rings that we're going to need. Now I need to get a couple of those itty bitty teensy tiny little ones. I'm going to lose something tiny. I just know it. Come here. Okay, there's one. Don't lose it. Where's number two? I don't need a big one. The little one. Come here. I should have just got a tweezer. Put the big one back we don't need. Save them because, you know, I'm going to lose them eventually. All right, let's get back to construction. Oh, it also comes with some cantal wire to make your coils. Stage one of building the atomizer, which you only have to do once if yours didn't come assembled, um, unless you want to clean it, is to get these little O-rings on these tiny little center posts. Whoops, dropped it. You knew that was happening, right? It's hard to get the tiny little O-ring over the screw. Stretch it. Okay, one on, one to go. Stretching seems to work best, but I have big hands. Okay, now those are on. Both sides of our center post to make a nice seal. Now let's take the big one and one goes on the uh, top piece in that nice little groove. Those go on fairly easily. And one goes on the bottom. Here's your 510 connection and the groove. And there fits our O ring. Now, to start putting it together, we need to screw the center posts into the bottom cap. Make sure it's straight and the threads aren't crossed. There we go. Now normally you would be putting on the stainless steel tank that comes with the unit, which just pushes on over the O-ring to make a nice tight seal. However, when I was ordering this, I also ordered the Kierfanis clear tank for it so that I could use the plastic clear tank instead of the stainless steel tank because I really like to have an idea of how much juice I have left. I also kind of like to know where the coil is, I mean the wick, um, so that I can angle it the right way when I'm vaping so it wicks well. So push the uh, clear tank on. The procedure would be the same with the stainless steel tank. I'm just going to use it with the clear one so I don't have to do it again. Now the second stage here is a little trickier because you've got to push the o-ring through and also screw that top cap onto that center post. So it's kind of a process of both, and it took a while to kind of wiggle it in there straight and make sure that there was also a good seal on the O-rings, and then it was screwed onto that central post fairly straight. <coughs> and there we go, that's the pretty much the unit together. Now we just need to put a coil in there. Oh, center post, positive post. Pushes through from the bottom so that that flat plate is what will make the uh, positive connection with your mod. Push. Okay, 510 connector. Now, there are three itty bitty little brass screws to go on the brass center post. One to screw down onto that, uh, to hold it in place. And the other two will be to hold the end of the coil in place against the positive post. My big hands, these are not fun things to do. All right, so this first one we want it to go all the way to the bottom to hold that post in place. Now you could, if your mod is, 
you know, one of those finicky ones that likes to have the center post out a little bit, you could adjust it for that. But that one seems to end just a little past flush, which is usually the perfect spot. Tighten that down. It's stiff. And we want to put one on just a few turns. And it will be the bottom of the two screws. Oh, right off the table. You know that, right? Just <sighs> Okay, after a short bit of searching around for the tiny little brass screws. Let's try this again. Don't drop it on the floor. We'll never find it. You should come with spare to these. Well, you want to go one you want to go down just a little bit, and the other one you want to go on just a few turns so that it comes right up next to that second one. Basically the end of the coil is going to go between those two and those two are gonna grip it in place. So I left just enough space to get a coil through there and then we can tighten them up. Now, the wick that I already seasoned is going to go in the hole. And this screw is going to function as the negative or ground. So I'm going to put the cantle wire for the coil under that and then tighten it so that I can then wrap the coil around the wick, which goes into the hole next to it. Now I cut mine at an angle on the bottom and then I'm going to cut it so that it's just a little bit above where the one coils, end of one of the coils going to be. So we'll just snip it off. Alright. Ready for coil wrapping. Let's uh, Unwind a bit of pretty tightly wrapped coil. Okay, so now I'm going to take the end of the coil that I had to find. I'm going to kind of hold it with my thumb, wrap it under that post, and then pull it around again so I can hold it with one finger. And I kind of want to hold it tight up to the threads underneath that little screw. And then I'm going to tighten it down with the included Allen wrench. And I'm going to make it nice and tight so that it can't pull off. Here we go. Now you can take that end and just sort of wiggle it against the nut and it will break off cleanly. Because those little wires are like guitar strings and you will poke your fingers out. Now, I'm going to put the wick in. And then I'm going to start wrapping four coils I do around the thing. Now I didn't go through seizing the wick. I don't have a blowtorch so frankly I have to hold it on a needle and I, I burn it in my gas stove burner for a little bit to get the crinkles off it and then I put um, e-liquid on it or just plain VG or PG and I let it fire basically flame off. And I do that a few times. And that seems to be the trick. Now I'm going for four wraps and I am not very good at this. They're never even, they're never straight. I always have to futz with them afterwards. So hopefully you are more dexterous than I. But once I get four loops, I'm going to go around in between those two brass screws around the center post twice. And then I'm going to tighten them up so that they are gripping the other end of that coil nice and tight. And then I'm just going to, oh, a little tighter. Get them nice and tight, and then wiggle, and snap that wire off. There we go. Now I'm going to take a sharp item. Most people use toothpicks. I know I shouldn't use metal, but I do, and I don't have a supply of toothpicks. So I'm going to kind of even the coils out, try to figure out where any shorts might form, and get them cleared ahead of time. I know I'm going to have to fire it out. And adjust them anyway, but I might as well try to even them up a little bit as it is. All right, I think we're ready to see if she fires up. Well, let's see what it looks like. So the top cap 
Um, unlike the top caps of most of the other Genesis devices I have or seen are not held on just by the pressure of an O-ring. This one actually screws tight. And it does screw so that the air hole ends up right where the coil is, which is actually kind of where I like it. And then any old 510 mouthpiece will fit on the top. Complete. We just need to fill her up and fire her away. Now, I'm putting it on Darwin. Of course, it's the Darwin is not going to close and shut off with it on there, but it is a convenient way to read the homage, which is flying all over the place. So I either don't have it screwed on good, um, or it's shorting out crazily. Let me adjust those little coils a little bit. Put a little juice on it <coughs> so it has something to fire. And let's see what we get. 1.6, 1.7 ohms. And dropping. I must have a short. I always have shorts. Let's fire it up. See where it glows. Adjust those coils a little bit. Give it some more juice to burn in. And they all seem to be glowing fairly evenly for the most part. All right, time to fill her up. That's what this other little nut is for. So we'll take it out with the Allen wrench and then twist it the rest of the way with our fingers. Get in there and pull it out. That is the opening for putting juice. Now, I do have a couple of those needle nose bottles, but they all have something else in them at the moment and your normal bottle squeezy won't work, so it's a good old trusty syringe. Now I found that in a lot of my Genesis tank devices, they don't work very well if you like fill them completely up to the top. So I tend to leave a little bit of air. I don't know why. It may not work that way for you. That's how it works for me. Doesn't make a lot of sense because there's still airflow through where the wick is, but it just seems to work better for me. So I'm done filling it. I'm going to put that little nut back in to seal up the hole. Now the nice thing about this is, I mean, on the Genesis, that hole where you can fill it with the syringe is always there. So I find that sometimes if I leave it on my side, especially if the tank is really full, it will leak out of there in addition to out the wick itself. Um, and then out the air hole. This doesn't seem to do it as much. I don't think it's as finished or as polished looking as the Genesis, but you know, it's pretty close to the same functionality. So this is about the uh, third tank of liquid I've run through it, and I'm on a dark sweet variety now. I started with something light and fruity. Um, the light and fruity seemed to wick a little better, um, but this hasn't been bad. Um, you just remember to tilt it a little bit sometimes, but pretty much the performance is fairly equal to my uh, to my little Genesis. Now, not as pretty and polished and charming, but then again, you don't have to pay for a whole mod. So I would imagine it's probably roughly equal to the Zaddies um, that Mike is coming out with, although as I said, probably not as polished, but they're fairly good. And it's been working really well. I've actually been dragging it around and using it quite a lot. And of course, the benefit of a Genesis is lots of vapor. Um, very good, very good flavor. Um, Occasional wicking issues, but you really need to match up the wick the number of squares per whatever on the wick you are using and the juice you're using with it. Um, you know, I had to adjust like I showed in the video a few times to get the distance between the coils so that they are firing properly and not uh, shorting.
and they are doing that fairly well. And it seems to, um, even though I do tend to keep it upright as often as possible, which is why it's on the programming so it stands up, um, I like the fact that the top screws on. Um, it's pretty heavy. So it actually fits with the Provary really well. Um, on most other lighter mods, like on a VMAX or something, while it would probably work just fine, it's going to be a little top heavy. I mean, the nice stainless steel heft of the Provary seems to off-weigh how heavy the DID is. And the same thing's true of most other Genesis atomizers. The ones made of metal, except for the scuba gen, which is you know mostly plastic, or of the Genesis mod itself. They're stainless steel, they're heavy. Um, so, I mean, keep that in mind. Something like the Phoenix or the little coil ones are going to be much lighter. Um, but other than that, I really like it. And I think I'm actually starting to get this whole Genesis wick and coil thing. Better with practice, maybe my coils will be more even. So, anyway, that's how I put the DID together. Um, it seems to be working really well. Uh, the nice thing is they seem to be in stock. Um, you go to the e.vape.gr and you can order it right there. It did take a couple weeks to come from Greece, but it came right away. Now they were about 90 euros, and so it's going to depend on what the current going rate of conversion is. Um, but they'll take PayPal or credit cards, and they shipped it fairly quickly. You know, standard post isn't real fast from overseas, but it got here like within a week or two. So, give them a check. They have a couple of models. They have a short one, a longer one, a mini one, and one that has like a cone thing on it now. I just got the uh, longer solid standard DID, which I understand are his initials. Um, so if you're interested in the Genesis Atomizer or picking up another one, and you're having trouble getting in on the uh, co-ops on the forums, that's a decent place to go pick one up. That Seems to be in stock. They were when I looked today. So there you go. Thanks for watching.